Can you hum along to every 80s pop melody? Do you still know the lyrics to all the 90s hip hop tracks? Well, it's time to put your music knowledge to the test with Song Quiz, the number one music quiz game on Alexa. You can play alone against random opponents or together with friends and family. Choose from a wide range of playlists and genres from the 1960s until now to see just how deep your knowledge goes. Just say Alexa, play Song Quiz. That's Alexa, play Song Quiz. Time for a break to talk about another great deal at McDonald's. It's summer, you're hot, and McDonald's is here to keep you chill with their new frozen drinks. Try their medium frozen Coke, frozen Fanta Blue Raspberry, and frozen Fanta Wild Cherry for just $1.69. What a sweet way to beat the heat. Grab it through the drive-thru or order on the app. Price and participation may vary, cannot be combined with any other offer. McD app download and registration required. What's up? I had a chance to chat with Mike Logan. Mike, amazing comedian, and he's hosting an event on June 17th, something free and fun for you to do. You're going to laugh. You're going to dance. You're going to drink. You're going to be outside shaking your ass. It's going to be amazing. Here's Mike Logan to tell you all about it. Enjoy. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. All right. I like your hair. You're growing it out. Yeah, you know, I'm doing the whole, hopefully by the time it gets the length of Jay-Z's, I'll also be a billionaire. Um, African-American hairstyles um, over the years are fantastic. Do you think one day the fade is going to come back? You know, I don't know just because of how many uh, white guys have fades now. So I don't know if we'll ever bring them back, honestly. Yeah, yeah. You remember like uh, Bobby Brown, he he would draw a part, he, he would cut a part in. I used and- to do that. I would get, I had a fade for a while, like maybe 10 years ago, and then I would get steps in it. And so it'd be like this. Okay. So now someone has to do that. Yes. you. I mean, you can't do that, right? I mean, I guess if I, if I, I could probably Google how to do it, but they have like specific kind of, um, clippers that do that straight lines like they have clippers that they can draw with and stuff well so you know that there's been people in history who've tried to do it themselves and they they ruin it and then they yeah. have to go to school <laughs> and and uh everybody laughs at them that would be the worst you know my mom used to cut my hair and she was uh, i was adopted into a white family and so she used to cut my hair with scissors and a comb and like an afro and like it, it was terrible and kids made fun of me so hard in elementary until finally i had to tell her i'm like you can't let me go to school like this anymore so like, there just be blotches missing everywhere and stuff it would be really bad so is she trying to straighten your hair with the comb no, i don't know i mean kind of so like you're supposed to pick a fro to cut it anyway but like you're supposed to use like relaxer and like use an actual afro pick with metal prongs that are this long that can actually make it through your pro she i'm talking like the dollar store little combs the ones that they give you to like like a um, uh, right. picture cool and then a pair of scissors from the drawer in the kitchen and that's what she's coming oh, here with god so that's a yeah. comb it's a comb that says goody on the side yep. the yeah. kind that you like put in your back pocket or whatever Holy was, shit. I believe I believe my mom used the term she used to rat her hair with it. So <laughs> Oh my Well, uh welcome in, Mike Logan. I'm I'm glad you are here. You've got an event coming up that you want to talk oh. about. And uh please take it away. Tell me what's going on because I, I like it that you're making people laugh. Oh, of course. Thanks, man. Um well it's called the Ice Cold Comedy Jam. It's happening this Friday at 7 30 p.m. at City Bill Brewing Company. Uh, in the Welcome Tent on the Grand River. Uh, it's a comedy music hybrid show. We're going to have music from uh, Chris Strappington, country music sensation. Uh, Lake Creative will be closing the show out with a 30-minute set. And then for the comedy portion, we're going to have Carl Sobel, who runs one of the best open mics in Grand Rapids, River City Saloon. Uh, we've got Rachel Struther, who was a runner-up in my most recent roast battle. She is pretty new to the scene, but very, very, very funny. And then closing the show, fresh off of... Uh, Fresh off his non-headliner gig, <laughs> opening for Monique and Dio Hughley at the Fox. We've got Josh Adams coming to town. Uh, that's incredible. That that sounds like a fun event, man. Uh, is this is this uh, do you, is this something that uh, event organization is not easy? There's a lot that goes into it, which probably why I'm guessing you won't be performing because of all the things you have to put together to make it 
make it happen. Uh, you I know, mean, I will a lot of work. Be, I will actually be hosting the entire night. Okay, good. Uh, so I'll be there from the opening of the show. Maybe, maybe I'll sing a song. Who knows? Um, all the way to the end of the show. Uh, the I've gotten pretty good at production to where once it gets to show time, the show is pretty good at running itself. So as long as all the moving parts work like they should, and we get all our sound checks done, we should have a really fun time. Um, and it's going to be like the weather's going to break for us. It's only going to be eighty that night. Uh, it's going to be on the river. You're going to have great beer from City Built. Uh, Downtown Grand Rapids Inc. also is a big contributor to this. Uh, it was originally conceived as part of the World of Winter Festival, and then you know Randall a bunch of speed bumps and we had to like table it and then now we finally brought it back we waited just to make sure that people are out and ready to go do stuff again and judging from the buzz that we've got and the response people are ready for a show like this yeah i mean uh to be able to uh hand pick that the talent that you just talked about is a credit to where we are i mean this is a there's a lot going on here i mean you you've got your hand in just about everything and to be able to uh, take those bodies and put them in there and deliver a quality night of entertainment for people in the community is spectacular. Yeah, I really pride myself on actually going out and watching comedy. Um, <clears throat> you'll find a lot of comedian, comedian bookers and comedy agencies rarely go to actual like open mics. You'll only see them at the comedy stores or like the comedy cellar or the laugh factories. But I mean, I like to go to every open mic in Grand Rapids because you find the Carl Sobels and the Rachel Struthers and the Michael Bustlers and, you know, all these other unnamed people that people don't know, but are genuinely just as funny, if not funnier than anything you'll find on Netflix. And so I'm glad that I'm able to bring that to, you know, Grand Rapids, which is obviously this big, booming, growing city. And to be able to do it for free for as long as I've been doing it for free is another thing that I'm really proud of because I feel like everybody deserves to see these kinds of talents and the talents, you know, deserve to be seen by everybody and not just in a bar where you got a battle with 14 drunk people half the time. I want to talk to you about writing comedy. Um, oh, okay. When it comes to writing, the term writing doesn't necessarily mean writing and like writing actual words down. It could just be thoughts in your own head, right? Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, most definitely. Um, I mean, every comedian writes in some form or the other. Uh, some of them will write every single word. So if you go to a comedian's show and you see them talk for 30 minutes, majority of comedians have written every single word of that 30 minutes. All the ums, stammers, pauses, everything that seems natural. Like These are usually pretty tightly prepared after months and weeks and weeks of trying it out at open mics. Yeah. But then you also have other comedians um, and examples of them would be like Big J Okerson, for example, like who is all crowd work. So, I yeah. mean, he goes out every single night. He's a completely different show and he's very good at it. But, you know, he doesn't write things. He may have generic jokes that he can pull on every now and then. But most of his comedy just comes from the fact that he's naturally good at pulling funny out of situations. Um, me, I am kind of somewhere in the middle uh, where if I think of something funny, um, it's usually something that's happened to me or something I've observed while being out. So I'll just jot a note down and the note will say, well, hold on, let's see, let's take a look. Let's see what note I got right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, here we go. So uh, wedding material. I, I was at a, I've been, I went to a wedding uh, two weekends ago and uh, a thought that I had was I like to watch the black servers watch the old white people dance at weddings. <laughs> and it's because like the only time you actually get a chance to see white people really cut loose no no kenny loggins intended <laughs> is that a wedding right like it's the only time like white people are like totally free and they don't feel judged and they dance and nobody cares it's dancing we're supposed to dance but right get these like 17 year old black kid surfers and like you know bruno mars 24 karat magic's on everybody goes to the dance floor and then yes. you get the black surfers who get caught off guard and they just go like this <laughs> they walk away <laughs> but like you know but like, that's not a joke that I would like, write. You know what I mean? That's just something that I live. So I'm able to just pull. And I like to keep it that way because in the Big J style, I do like to let my show kind of go where it goes, where if somebody's talking to me, I don't have a problem interacting with them. I don't recommend anybody ever just do that to any comedians. That right. you go see. Don't talk to the comedians. It's not cool. Correct. But I don't mind it. Um, well, again, you, don't do not, it to me, but I don't. When you were talking about the scenario about the servers and the dancers, now that you've you wrote, you wrote it down. You've yeah. practiced it. You just voiced it to me and it was executed appropriately. It's now there. Now mm -hmm. you might not like, I'm going to work this in, but at some point you might be 
with maybe an interaction with a crowd member, or maybe something just pops into your head on stage. Now that it's there, it's forever there. It's never going to leave because you know what I mean? You've, yeah. you've, you've connected it and you've, you've added to your repertoire. And, and I think that that's, that's fantastic because um, I, I've thought the same thing, not that I'm a comedy writer, but I've thought, Oh boy, something funny just popped into my brain. I'll bet you at some point I'll end up mentioning this on my show. Yeah. Months later. And then sure enough, it, it happens or it manifests, you know, and I think that that's really cool. And I also think it's terrifying how, um, when it comes to crowd work, which like what you said, you, you, you kind of do, but not like in a Jay Okerson way. Have you ever like, I, uh, like wrote in, I'm going to talk to the crowd or is it when it just happens, you then organically play off of it? Oh, I never want to talk to the crowd, okay. like ever. Like I don't go on stage. I, I'm a really good comedian. I don't want to go up there and like have a crowd member try to take over my set because I trust the set. Um, but if somebody does say something, I will never not address them. <laughs> like I'm very, you know me for years now. Like I've never had a problem <laughs> right. addressing somebody when I have a problem with them. So I'm also pretty good at keeping it light though. Cause there's a thin line between like making everybody okay with what's happening and making people feel uncomfortable with what's happening. All right. A word for FitBod, which is an app that is going to help you get in shape, stay in shape, help you to live longer, avoid injury be more durable, and just overall improve your quality of life and your health. Believe me, I know what it's like to start and stop exercise programs. The FitBod app, though, is helping me stay motivated. There's no question that my overall strength being improved because of the FitBod app is going to help me destroy Mike Ball in the Grand Rapids Half Marathon coming up in October. At the end of this, I'm going to tell you how to take advantage of the FitBod app. After you download the FitBot app and you put your information about your age, your weight, your fitness goals, things like that, it's going to tailor specific workouts for each of your body parts for each days of the week. It's a fantastic way to track what you're doing and stay on top of it and keep you motivated. That's what I love so much about this. Basically, they take the guesswork out of what you're supposed to be doing. Gone are the days when you just march into the gym and start slinging around weights and hope that something works out. What's going to happen to you there is you're going to lose motivation because you're not going to see any results or worse you're going to get hurt tapping into the fitbot app is going to help you achieve your goals and trust me after you start seeing the results of all the hard work you're putting in you're going to stay motivated that's the key and with fitbot guiding you every step of the way that's going to happen sooner rather than later it's time to quit talking and finally start doing something hey i'm right there with you i've eaten myself out of shape and i'd like to get back into shape the fitbot app is going to help me do that let's get motivated and do it together you can build your fitness habit and become a better version of yourself with fitbot and how about this you get 25 percent off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash Zane. So let me say that all again, okay? You go to fitbod.me slash Zane, and you can try the app for free. You can also get 25% off of your subscription when you do that. fitbod.me slash Zane. 25% off when you sign up today at fitbod.me slash Zane. Zane. At Progressive, you can get 24-7 protection, even if you break the space-time continuum. We did it! We time-traveled to yesterday! Wait, Progressive covers us 24-7, but we just created an eight-day week, and it's 24-7 coverage, not 24-8. We gotta go back. Are you joking right now? Shh, I'm calling them. Hi, I have a question about time travel. Progressive offers more than a great price when you bundle home and auto. We offer round-the-clock protection, which literally means anytime. Coverage from Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers and subject to policy terms. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. So with Okerson, though, I cannot imagine. I mean, he has probably done this so much with that type of interaction that though it might seem like he's doing it flying by the seat of his pants, he's probably had that interaction on some level to some degree in the past. So he knows exactly what he's supposed to say, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely that and a combination of just kind of actually being, you know, that quick-witted to be. Because, I mean, well, uh, some of the smartest people I've met come up with things that are like that. And I'll just be like, oh, where's that from? Well, I just made that up. And it's like, oh, and, I mean, Big J is one of those guys where, like, you know, I've performed with him twice and uh, had him try to steal one of my girlfriends once, too, which was hilarious. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it was very casual. He did it, so it kind of played it off. But, <laughs> Holy shit. Um, 
But like he is one of those guys who like even in regular conversation, he's that quick. Um, so like there are some people who are just that good at it that can fly by the seat of their pants. But yeah, over the years, you do just have things in your back pocket and ready for like, you know, somebody somebody talks in the crowd and they're a nurse. Somebody's got, you know, 30 nurse jokes ready just in case a nurse says something. Right. So I mean, that's just that you just keep building up over the years. And when you're doing a different show every night, you can use that joke the same time five nights in a week and nobody's going to know. Uh, where are you in terms of your career? Because, you know, comics talk about um, certain level of uh, uh, years grinding before it suddenly becomes a lot easier for them. Are you in it? Can you look at what you've done in comedy and kind of like put yourself into a timeline? Oof. Um, I, I will say this. I don't think, and I've, you know, I've met all my comedic idols. It doesn't ever get easier. It just gets different. Okay. Um, I, think, I think that's something that a lot of newer comics need to understand. I didn't even understand when I was younger is that when you're an entertainer and you're, you can speak to this too, when you're an entertainer, it doesn't ever really get easier. If you plan on succeeding your whole career, like if your goal is to be the best at your job, you should be prepared for the fact that no matter how much money you get or how many albums you can sell or whatever, it's just going to get different, not easier. And I think once that that's more of an acceptable way to teach comedy, I think you'll find less people being frustrated with how long it actually takes to be successful in comedy because it is, it's a cross country race and it's never a sprint. Like there's very few comedians who have ever been overnight successes. Like Bo Burnham is the only one I can ever think of off the top of my head that just went from obscurity to being Bo Burnham in one year and everybody else, you know, ground for very grinded, grinded, for a very long time. Uh, they, yes, they've been they've been grinding. <laughs> yes, they've been they've been known to grind. <laughs> and so I think once you get more of the realization that it's not uh, a thing with a goalpost, that it's just a marathon, it becomes easier to cope with. Um, like my job doesn't get easier when I start booking bigger shows. Like my job was technically easier when I was just an open mic host. Now I've got, you know, I've got budgets that I got to deal with and artists from coming from all across like the Midwest. And like, there's like a lot of different hands in the pot now when I just want to put on a show, you know? And so I think that I would say in my career right now, I am right where I need to be. Um, I'm kind of in a bit of a shift where I'm stepping away so much from, constantly constantly doing stand-up and i'm leaning more into producing and finding out what that is for me i've also got you know some secretive projects in the works that aren't comedy related that i'm working on that are things that i've been passionate about since before i became a comedian and now that i've you know established my voice established myself here as a comedian i feel the freedom to be able to branch off and do these other things which is why you don't ever see me really classify myself as a comedian anymore and i always say entertainer because uh -huh. you know, I'm like, you know, I'm an actor, I'm a voiceover artist, I'm a brand ambassador, and I'm a stand-up comedian, but I'm a human first. So, I mean, I got to figure out what I would like to do and what I want to do with my life first, and then make sure everything else falls in line. And right now, you know, it's comedy, but it's shifting into some other things. So, I would say in my career, I am right where I need to be, but I didn't figure that out until a couple of months ago. So, <laughs> And you're having fun. You're, you're enjoying yourself, right? I am for the most part, yeah. I mean, I enjoy myself, like... The night of the show, you know, is amazing. The day I come up with the show is amazing. Every day after is amazing. Right. The work that goes into it is work. Like, it's work. And sometimes it can be very stressful. But at the end of the day, I can't really complain about, you know, what I get to do with my life. Like, when I wake up, you know, I'm really in control, per se, of what I get to do. And right. at the end of the day, things that I do do with my time are things that genuinely give good feelings to people. So I can't really feel bad, like... So, yeah, I guess, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm having fun. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. And you know, what's funny is uh, I know you had fun today because you were with one of, uh, one of my uh, crushes that would be Terry DeBoer from Wood TV 8. Uh, let's, yeah. let's uh, take a look. Let's see how you did. You ready? Oh, are you sure? I haven't actually watched this. Okay. <laughs> can you, can you uh, hear it right now? I can, yeah. Okay, it's good. Wednesday, so we're look starting the countdown look at her. to the weekend. She, you know what is remarkable is she's, she looks, she still looks like she's 32. I mean, seriously, what the hell? You know, I will say this. I've done a lot of morning television. She uh -huh. was without a doubt, the most professional, the most, like we did a beautiful, like pre-interview segment where she got to know me, which made the chemistry really good. Um, she is really good at her job. Like really. Oh my good God. At it. 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, she she can do just about anything, uh, being that she's uh, kind of like a jack of all trades uh, a type of personality on Wood TV. There's no question. We have Mike Logan yeah. here to talk about the ice cold. Look at him. Look at my you, you know, I, I wear two hats here. I'm an 8 West host. I'm part of Storm Team 8. Look at those Hot shoes, man. Time yeah. That we have had I knew they were the gonna last be full couple body of years. Shots. And we've got the full ice out. cold man on our couch. It's perfect she timing. She calls you the ice cold man. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it really is a good time to just stay cool. <laughs> All right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna watch the whole thing, but I exactly. what I'll do I is uh, congratulations about your. Book. I'll end up oh, uh, so I'll end up uh, linking it up in the show notes of this. But she's awesome. Right. I'm glad you got to do all of that. Did you do anything else during the day? I did actually. I meant, I have to tell you, I was on JoJo Gerard this morning, and he told me to tell you what's up. How about that guy? Um, talk he's about great. an underrated personality. Mm -hmm. um, and he's very, very funny. Long time on WSNX. He left town, went to Maryland, come here to back to Grand Rapids. He's been on the air there at that radio station for years. And I mm -hmm. think and I think he needs a little bit more credit than, than what uh, he's given. You know, well, when you're down the hall from free beer and hot wings, you know, did you uh, now uh, was that did you like want to bang on their door, too, or perhaps or is it because you it's know the network funny? show? Is it hard to get a hold of those guys? You know what's interesting? Well, so they were they were actually recording while I was there this morning, and um, I never once like ever reached out to about working with them. Not for any particular reason. Like I don't dislike right. them at all. Never done it. I never listened to their show, so I never even thought about it. Right. Um, but as they're walking past, like you know me, I'm a bit of a mischievous guy. As they are walking past, you know the on air light is on. I see them all talking, and then they all looked at me, and I you know I got my sunglasses on inside. I got all my chains on and shit, and so they all waved at me. And I really had to stop myself from just knocking on the glass and being like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That would have been excellent. I want to go back and listen to it. And, and just, I mean, I definitely would have gone back and listened to it had you busted in there. I just now, was like, this that's my guerrilla warfare. <laughs> now, now, Carl is very tight with Joe on that show. Yeah, they hang out all the time, yeah. So, you know, so that's cool. All right, excellent. Um, all right. Now the, uh, uh, ice cold comedy jam is on Friday. It is a free event city bill brewing company, in grand Rapids. All the details and things are in the show notes about how to get there, but you go there, get a nice cold beer on, on Monroe Avenue right there. You can't miss it right, right along the river. And we uh, do recommend getting there at 7 PM. Cause we expect a very large turnout. And then we're going to want people to, it's, since it's free general admissions, so we're going to want people to get their drinks, get their seats and seated by the time the show starts. All right, man. Hey, I appreciate the time. I love talking about what you do and uh, always, always good. So oh, right. shout out to Angelica Lee for drawing this backwards. So it shows up the right way on camera. Um, I it. OK, is I, I don't know if it is. It looks like is it's it? not. Does it say ice? What is it? Can you read it or no? It's backwards. <laughs> <Damn> it. <laughs> she drew it, the whole thing backwards. June 17th. I think she should have written it normal and it, it would have been perfect <laughs> yeah, i guess so well and my screen because i'm looking at my screen it's the right way so, you know, uh, I, I'm may, maybe there's a, <laughs> maybe there's a setting i can do but no i don't i don't see it oh well i guess you should have luck june well, 17th ice cold comedy jam name. Yeah, it does say June 17th, High School Comedy Jam. So if you listen to the end of this episode, you got to actually know what this actually says. <laughs> All right. Break a leg and uh, enjoy you, Mike. Thanks a bunch, buddy. Always a pleasure, Eric. All right, buddy. See ya. Take care. Okay, that was great. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I, I know you're going to have a good time. So uh, well done, and I'll, I'll talk to you down the road. All right. Thanks, man. See ya. At Progressive, you can get 24-7 protection, even if you break the space-time continuum. We did it. We time-traveled to yesterday. Wait, Progressive covers us 24-7, but we just created an eight-day week, and it's 24-7 coverage, not 24-8. We gotta go back. Are you joking right now? Shh, I'm calling them. Hi, I have a question about time travel. Progressive offers more than a great price when you bundle home and auto. We offer round-the-clock protection, which literally means anytime. Coverage from Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers and subject to policy terms. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. Dunkin' Refreshers are the perfect way to get a little more out of your day. With more tropical flavors like new mango pineapple and more ways to get glowing. Available with green tea, coconut milk, or lemonade. You've got what you need to make the most out of every moment. Even the ones spent stuck in traffic. <sighs> what a beautiful day. Sip into all your favorite Dunkin' Refreshers, like new mango pineapple. America runs on Dunkin'. Price and participation may vary. Limited time offer. Additional charges may apply.